Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Emil and this is Project G Lander. In case you're wondering what Project G Lander is all about, I'm taking this perfectly capable Mercedes GL320 um, kids hauler slash um, grocery getter um, and I'm going to convert it into an off-roading vehicle for that one time I'm going to go off-roading because in the last three years that I've uh, had the truck, you know, I've spent a grand total of about a minute and a half um, off the road with it. And that's because I had to park on the side of the road to check my cell phone. So basically what I'm doing is, is taking a bunch of money, throwing it at the truck to make it less capable by deleting the third row seats and, and the blue tech system and, you know, putting it on mud and snow tires in the hope that um, sometime next year I'm going to have you know, an hour where I'm not doing some home renovation or fixing a crappy Audi so that I can actually go and get this truck dirty. Uh, and uh, that's all assuming my wife will actually let me do that. So that's the project in a nutshell. If you have a GL or you like the GL or you want to have the GL or uh, you just want to see me destroy a perfectly good working truck so I can go over lending because, well, let's face it, everybody's going over lending these days. Click subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming content. And there's going to be lots of it. All right. Now we have a lot of work to do. Let's go get it done. Now, before we can go off-roading or overlanding or whatever you want to call it, uh, we need a vehicle that will get us there and get us back. At the moment, the motor uh, has quite a few issues with it that need to be addressed before I can bravely take this off the road. You know, right now, if I break down on the side of the road, I'll call CAA, they'll come tow me home, it's not a big deal. If I'm about 500 kilometers into the bush, it'll be very hard to actually rescue this truck if something happens with the motor. So to get that done, we need to address some basic maintenance issues. The biggest problem I've got right now is an oil leak that's, you know, leaving oil all over my driveway, making my wife really mad. I suspect it's the oil cooler seals uh, in the middle of the V. If you're familiar with the OM642, you will know that the early versions of the motor are notorious for leaking oil from the oil cooler seals because uh, the seal design was bad or the material was bad whatever the case is. Now, I'm perfectly capable of replacing the seals with the motor in the vehicle. However, I decided to take the easy way out and actually get the motor and transmission out of the car. Why? I don't know. However, I suspect that the 15 or so hours that I spent taking the motor and transmission out will save me uh, 15 plus hours and quite a lot of back pain trying to fix all of these issues with the motor actually in. With the motor out, I actually have access uh, to a lot of other things that I wanted to do, such as engine mounts, um, you know, some suspension upgrades. So in episode one, we're gonna pull the engine and transmission out of the truck so they're a little bit easier to service. Spoiler alert, they're already out. So why don't we go see how I got that done? This whole thing is gonna come out together in one piece. So I'm not gonna bother start taking anything off at the top here. However, we're gonna have to disconnect um, our harness going on the left side, all of the intercooler and um, radiator piping. AC uh, is on this side with the um, hydraulic pump. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try my best to keep the AC um, on so I don't have to discharge it. So what I'm gonna try and do, what I normally do when I do engine swaps, basically uh, unhook the compressor from the motor so that the compressor can stay with the car and the motor can just go. So we're gonna, you know, let's start taking stuff uh, stuff off. We're gonna start up at the top. I'm gonna have to remove most of the suspension, basically disconnect the suspension from the subframe. Once we get down on the bottom, I'm gonna have to disconnect the drive shaft and basically everything that's connected to the transmission because the whole unit's gonna come out together, the transmission and the engine. All right, start taking stuff off. Okay, I've been at this for about two hours now, so let's take a quick look at uh, what I've actually done. So I opened up the front, which gives me easy access to a lot of the uh, hoses and stuff like that. Uh, you probably don't have to do that, but it does help quite a bit. Now, um, the harness on the motor is actually very, very straightforward. It's basically one cable that comes off the side of the engine right there and goes snakes in under the wheel. You saw. We take the um, ECU out. Now, I wouldn't have put the ECU up here, to be honest, right in the um, wheel well, but 
it seems like it's pretty well protected. It's got a nice plastic cover on top of it. It's not a big deal. So if you ever actually need to get this tuned, this has to come out of here because uh, the EDC-17, you cannot tune through the OBD port. This has to be put on a bank. Anyways, so good access through here once you get the plastic shield out. And as you can see, you can access a lot of the hoses from here. There's really only three cables that kind of come out of here. The second big one is your alternator cable, which basically comes from the alternator right up to the uh, main uh, power plug here. Um, after that, once those cables are done, you've pretty much got nice clean access uh, on the side here. Uh, one ground attached to the alternator there. Careful for that, don't forget that. Although, um, having removed a bunch of engines, I'll tell you that you're always going to forget one cable that's going to be uh, pulling on your motor as you're trying to get it out. Coolant and intercooler hoses, very, very, very straightforward. You've got a very nice clean access to all of your hoses, everything that connects here. So in fact, within about half an hour to an hour, you, I, I've cleaned everything out here uh, that needs to be removed. So you can see there's a lot of room. This motor is just going to go straight down. One thing that I haven't touched on yet is the... Um, transmission cooler lines, which I had to modify last time I opened it up because the lines rusted and uh, this this one being fitted with a uh, towing package. It actually has a, um, a cooler for the transmission oil with a thermostat. So the lines kind of rusted out. So what I did is I actually deleted the cooler from the front and I just hooked it up straight into the um, the radiator there. Now I do tow with this, so this is not ideal, especially in the summer. So what I'm gonna actually do, hopefully once this is all done, is fit a standalone or like a aftermarket cooler right on the front of this so that I can actually uh, not worry about the transmission oil temperatures as I'm towing because like I said, I uh, regularly tow a dual axle trailer with some vehicle on top of it. So I definitely wanna have uh, good temperatures for the oil. So uh, these lines have to get separated somewhere. I'm guessing maybe at the transmission so I can take them out and uh, get them out of the way. Other than that, complete. Uh, this is all clean here. I'm basically going on this side. Now on this side, um, things are a little bit sketchier, so to speak. Um, and the only reason is I'm trying to get the AC off because I don't want to discharge the system. There's no reason for it, it works fine. Um, I don't want to add uh, any extra complexity to, to the job uh, or cost for that matter. So what I wanna do is I want to disconnect the AC compressor from the motor and leave the compressor with the car. To remove the uh, AC compressor, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move the power steering pump out of the way because it's right on top of it. I don't have good access uh, and clean view to the lines but the power steering pump itself is supposed to stay with the motor because you've got your reservoir, the power steering, the cooler lines for the power steering are right down there and everything stays with the block, okay? In fact, if you can tell, right here is our steering column coming out of the steering wheel. There's only one bolt right here that holds it, uh, holds it in place. So actually what I think was gonna happen is I'm going to take this bolt out, separate the column, and actually attach it to the motor here because the whole thing is just going to come straight down. We have one hose at the back. I'm guessing it's going to be a second hose somewhere. I haven't seen it yet, but this is for your heater core um, in the cabin. Uh, I have to disconnect that. I still have to take the shields out. I've taken them before. I just haven't gotten to them yet. That will open up some space uh, to work in the back. And that's about it up here. All right. Uh, we do have a fuel line. There's going to be a fuel feed from somewhere. We have to uh, figure out where that goes. I haven't seen it yet. But all in all, fairly straightforward job uh, cleaning everything up around the motor, all the accessories to drop it down. Power steering pump and compressor are disconnected and out of the way. Compressor is a little annoying, uh, very little access to um, the three bolts that are holding it, but not impossible. And with the, the three bolts gone, you can see the compressor is kind of out of the way. So you can um, move it, keep it here with the car while the engine drops down. I'm gonna have to be careful with this. I obviously don't wanna tear the lines uh, and have any problems. The last thing I've got on this side is the um, power steering shaft. I just wanna show you what it looks like um, with the shaft removed. The shaft collapses right here. 
so you just knock it right up and it will just kind of come in and then i guess when it's time to put it back out it will extend but um it's important to see i want to show you this because we were having a hard time when we were doing the sprinter last time um, not knowing what's going on with this plastic piece this plastic piece in itself is uh like i said it can be broken and it locks it lines up the shaft with the splines at the bottom if you do end up moving this or rotating in any particular way it's going to completely go um, misaligned now that we're done with the top we've disconnected everything left right front everything else let's have a look at the bottom and what's required to do this so this is the subframe that's basically holding the entire assembly to the car so the motor is attached to the subframe via the engine mounts which you can see right up there actually maybe you can't see them so there's your engine mounts right up there so if we want the motor to come out the bottom we're gonna have to undo the main connecting bolt so it's one here one in the front there one there and one back there now the there's a couple of ways we can go about doing that um the suspension is attached to uh, the subframe so we can do it in two different ways we can either leave the suspension as is attached and disconnect from the shock here and from the control at the top which means that the entire assembly is going to stay with the engine when we drop it down the second option is to actually disconnect and remove everything off the car i think the caliper has to obviously stay because we don't want to drain the the, the brake lines um so so that's for the suspension so we could free it up or we can leave it with the car there's not really a big deal it's not very complicated to remove the the control arm here um a couple of bolts and frankly i haven't replaced these bushings or the front so maybe this is a good time to uh to do that the same goes with the sway bar i've already done the sway bar bushings there and the uh links so possibly i'll leave the sway bar where it is and i'm not gonna bother removing it but maybe i will not really sure there's very it's very easy it's just a couple of bolts take that out um after that we move back to the transmission now to get the transmission is obviously attached to the motor um and i don't necessarily want to detach it certainly not from the bottom of the car if we drop the whole assembly maybe it's going to be easier for now what we need to do is disconnect the the drive shaft going out to the back so that's going to free that up after that the front diff and the transfer case um, can stay with the entire assembly i don't really need to take them out right now they're not really in my way uh until i'm ready to if i decide to take everything apart to clean it up or whatever once the engine's out so for now it's just the rear drive shaft that needs to be disconnected so that the entire thing can just lower itself down here for the transmission there's six bolts three on this side three on this side and a couple of supporting brackets that we just have to get rid of one of the last things to go will be the exhaust um now this is the blue tech version even though like i said the um system is actually disabled because i had to tune it out so this is our scr that's at the back this is where we uh, the injector for the urea and this is the diesel particulate filter at the front which i need to gut so i already mentioned earlier this has been disabled however it's still in place so i need to gut this out or get a straight pipe if i feel rich so that i can uh, basically free up the exhaust flow for the motor because right now i'm pretty sure this is clogged and is robbing us of horsepower so first things first exhaust has to go and the suspension has to go whether i'm going to leave it with the motor or i'm going to take it completely off i'm not really sure but we need to remove it that's the right side finished um, as you can see this is the subframe here holding the motor there it is and this is your main bolt holding it to the frame with the suspension out of the way now the subframe is more or less free to simply just drop down um, without really taking anything else out um, we're gonna have to support it obviously from the bottom and frankly i haven't decided yet whether i'm gonna try and use like just my uh, regular dolly here i'll try and get one of those hydraulic ones that you can lift up so that i can support the engine up in the air 
and then drop it down. I don't really know. It just depends on how much space I really have once I drop the car down and put it on the dolly. Um, that's one side done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the second, the left side. And then we're going to go to the back, take the exhaust and the drive shaft off and then drop the engine. Um, I decided against trying to pull the the rubber there, uh, the hangers. So what I've actually done is gone and undone the uh, the bolts at the top. So there's one, um, two brackets per muffler. So one on the side there, and one in the back in the middle up here. All right, right there. So you've got the right, and you've got the left muffler. So now let's get the truck up in the air and there's only one more bracket holding the whole thing in the front. That's good. Perfect. Let's get it up. So to pull this out, um, I've got a little dolly under. So I'm supporting the subframe for the engine and the mount for the transmission at the back. So the idea here is everything's lying on the dolly right now. I'm gonna undo the main mounting bolts front and back and basically lift the car um, with the engine and transmission staying on the bottom. That's the plan anyways. should do it we're gonna stop here motor came out i think i'm at about 15 hours total to pull this out um to be honest if i didn't have the lift i probably wouldn't have attempted this or have done it this way um the truck's big everything on it is big it's very heavy this isn't an e-class with the 642 i'm not saying that would be easy but it'll be easier uh, the suspension components are quite hefty so i was very lucky to have the lift and in fact with the car all the way up as far as you can go in my garage i've only got about this much space between the truck and the engine to pull it out so actually i was very lucky because it could have easily turned out that um i could have lifted the car up and not actually be able to pull the engine out which would have been a big problem so the engine is out in the next episode i'm going to strip it all down we're going to bring the turbo out to turbo parts canada to get it rebuilt and we're going to start ordering parts i didn't want to do that until i actually figured out really what was you know what was leaking and what i need but i always suspect i'm going to have to get all the gaskets out of here uh and get uh you know and update them i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm going to do with the exhaust yet there is a uh part that's available for deleting the dpf and the uh, scr on this truck it's about a thousand bucks and i'm frankly not too keen on spending that kind of money my hope was to just gut the uh, the DPF and leave it at that but um, it is a bit rusted it has started to the the v-band here has started to deteriorate so you know what maybe it's just easier to just get the whole new system and be done with it um, that's it thank you so much for joining me on project G Lander we have a lot of work to do uh, the motor uh, is probably the least of our problems because once this is sorted out, I'm going to have to go deal with the interior. I'm going to have to delete the urea tank in the back, bigger tires, try and have a look at the suspension, why I have um, a squat, a bit of a squat on the rear left. Maybe I'm just imagining things because all of the bags are new. Um, anyways, lots of work to do. Uh, thank you for joining me. If you like what you see, thumbs up. If you want to see more of this content, click subscribe. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.